Okay, in this video that's coming up, this is going to be part three. There will, there will be a part four to this series. Um, this part three is going to be on the making the plenum, uh, the supplies I use. Uh, the tank is already set up now. It's completely set up. I made it into a Taiwanese tank when I was in Thailand. They use sand. Uh, I went with, when I looked for goldfish and bettas and stuff like that, I saw a sand bottom and it had some pebbles and stuff in it. So I try to make that kind of a bottom for this aquarium. And I'll show you that in this film, uh, this YouTube. Uh, the canister filter I hooked up. That's the F-Zone canister filter. Uh, one thing I will say is the suction cups to the canister filter, they, they, they're no good. You know, they, they're very soft. They're too soft to hold anything in the place. But I had spare suction cups. Um, but th that turned out good using that canister filter. Uh, easy to hook up and everything else. But as far as the tank went, the tank went very smoothly. Everything was planned. I think the biggest hassle I had with the tank was putting the screen over the plenum and gluing it down with the hot glue gun. Burnt my fingers a lot. But other than that, everything went like clockwork, uh, which I will show you in this video step by step of what I did and the products. One thing I was thinking of doing was using a parabolic louver uh, known as a crate. And I went to the hardware store and I was going to make it to show you that you can make a plenum out of that. And the price turned me off uh, because I could buy this. This is what I used. And this is what I did the 90 gallon off of. And you buy this off of Amazon. And you can buy these in 10 packs or 20 packs. And so I bought a 20 pack because a 40 gallon breeder uses 18 of these. And they just snap together. And it's easy to drill, easy to handle. It's already done for you. Already got the lattice work of holes in it. So all you have to do is just put a screen or something over it if you're going to use sand. But other than that, uh, that's the reason I bought it. It winds up being that it was easier. It was, uh, I'd already had the legs on it. I don't have to make legs. I don't have sanding to do. It cuts with a utility knife. It's a nice, sharp utility knife you can cut off. The tips here, it's easy to work with, easy to drill. So for the price, it was less expensive to buy this, a 20 pack, than to make it out of uh, the parabolic louvers that they sell at the hardware store and less work. So that's one thing I did is use the same bottom as I did on the 90 gallon, which worked out great. There, it takes about 18 of these, so you'll have two extra in case you screw up, drill a hole wrong or something. You have an extra one to do. That's all going to be in this video. But as far as the tank is concerned, uh, you're going to be surprised how I set it up. But it, it's all set up. It already has fish in it. Uh, I tested the water. Uh, nothing so far. No ammonia, no nitrates, no nitrites, nothing. Uh, and I'll tell you how I did that. But uh, like I said, this is going to be a goldfish tank. So a little bit of decorations are in the center. And right now the temperature of the tank is, uh, I checked it this morning, was 72, 73 degrees out here in the Lanai. It will warm up here in Florida. So... That's okay. These are goldfish. They could take the cooler temperatures. Plus, I have some uh, hornworth in there. Hornworth is one of those plants that take cooler temperatures better than real hot water, warm water. So I put that in there so in case the goldfish get hungry, they could munch on that. I have a couple water lilies coming in today. I have a light coming in uh, still for the aquarium. Like I said, these are pygmy water lilies, so they'll produce little tiny flowers uh, and I'm using the fluval light because I could take moisture and everything so I don't want to put a top on it but otherwise everything went real smooth but I will tell you this uh, I'm going to show it in the video definitely 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 I can't emphasize this enough um, by yourself 
the board, foam board to put your tank on. I will show you close-ups or some kind of foam. A guy said he uses foam that he bought at Home Depot. Uh, trouble is with that foam, it either comes in pink or blue. And, uh, you know, the foam board comes in black, so you, you don't notice it with the tank. Really blends in nice. Highly recommend, highly recommend. You definitely go with foam board or you go with a cushion underneath each tanks when you buy it with the metal stands because they are uneven. I'll show you close-ups exactly what I mean so you don't wind up with troubles in the future. Okay, and all that's coming up in this video, so stay tuned. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is get your supplies. This is a Lee under gravel filter. This is from an Echo Complete filter. I had some left over from that filter. But the Lee filter is just for beta tanks, and that's how it comes. And then, of course, I bought the under gravel filter, uh, which is off uh, Amazon. Everything you see here is from Amazon, except for that bag of Echo Complete that uh, I got with the canister filter. I never used it. So I'm going to put that on the bottom of the plenum like I did with the 90 gallon. Anyhow, so make sure you get all your supplies like I did. And just go on Amazon and type in under gravel filters. And everything that I'm showing you will pop up right away with the little Lees. Uh, that's for uh, the Lees under gravel filter is basically for a little fishbowl for a betta. The first thing I did was take the betta bowl filter and I cut it up. Have yourself a real nice sharp utility knife to do this with. And this is the way I did it. I cut it off. It's easy to cut with that knife and then separate the two pieces. Then I cut the little edge off and I use sandpaper to sand the bottom of it. So it roughs it up. As you can see how I cut it, all you have to do is just cut it the exact same way and you're ready to uh, mount that on top of the plate. For, and then I took the plate, took a corner, and I pre-drilled it with a pilot drill because now after doing that, I will go in with a step drill to make it uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter. Now, if you don't have step drills, here in the United States, you can get cheap step drills from Harbor Freight Tools. I think you can buy three of them for like 15 bucks, and uh, they work good. They're cheap, but they work good. As you can see, this is what a step drill is, and you go into that pilot hole, and you drill out that hole to put the piece on. You see, this is the way it's going to go on. And now uh, you will only be using a 3 8 uplift tube, only one for the aquarium. You don't need more than one for that 40-gallon uh, breeder. And once you make sure it fits and it lines up with the hole, I use what is called a uh, rapid fuse. You could buy this at the Home Depot. You could buy it at Lowe's. It works. Uh, it's very fast. It doesn't seem to come apart in water. And uh, I've used it on my 90 and other aquariums and never had a problem with it, you know, unbonding to the substance that I put it on. Now, here it is. Here's the insert. As you can see, I've just glued it. And it's at the corner. And now it's, uh, it's ready to be clamped. So once you glue it, I clamped it down to hold it, and I left it like this for about uh, three to five hours to make sure. It, it glues very, very fast, but uh, I went and did other things and worked on other things while this was setting with the clamps to hold it down.
The next thing you want to do is I put the plates in the aquarium to see how many it would use. And of course, this is the 40 gallon breeder and it uses 18 of the 20 plates. So you have a couple spare plates and they just snap together on the bottom so they become one. Next thing I did, I put it all together on the workbench. As you can see with the uplift tube in the right hand corner there, it's all been glued. It, it turns it a little white, the plastic, but that's nothing to worry about. It's all glued in. It is super tight. And uh, like I said, I used it on the 90 and no problems at all. But that's about as big as uplift tube as you need is a 3.8. So you're not going to over pump water through the plenum itself. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to apply a edge on the side of the plenum that you're going to be using. And this uh, black edging is just a craft screen. You can buy at Joann's or a craft store and it costs me a dollar a sheet. And what I do is I glue it on with hot glue. And the two tools you're going to need, you're going to need a putty knife and you're going to need a sharp utility knife, as you see here. And uh, these will be used to cut the crafts, the, the screen, the craft screen can be cut with a scissors. And I leave it a little taller than the one inch plenum that I'm going to be using because it's one inch high. I make it a little taller than that. And uh, I will trim that down once it's all been glued along the sides. As you can see here, I use the putty knife to push the uh, craft screen next to the plastic because that uh, hot glue is very hot. If you use your fingers, you're going to burn it. So I use it to press it against it. As you can see, the screen on the side is higher than the plenum itself. But once it's all dry and everything, what I did is I actually did it in two steps. I split it in half, did half of it, and then I did the other half of the plenum. So it made it a lot easier than just having a big sheet because my tabletop wasn't big enough. And here you can see I made this screen a little bit longer. So when I connect the two pieces together, uh, I can glue the ends and they just snap in where you see those little tabs, the two will. It, it made it easier for me to do it in two pieces. Next thing I did is I trimmed off that a little bit because the screen goes all the way down to the bottom so no uh, substrate can get underneath the plenum. Uh, now I trim it up to make it cosmetically look nice and uh, this shows you exactly what it looks like and as you can see it's the one inch height and it goes all the way down to the bottom. And you will do this to both pieces. Like I said, I split it in half. Uh, you will do this to both pieces. Trim them up, make them real nice and uh, tight so no substrate will get underneath it. Once I was done trimming up the first piece, in between where four pieces connected together, I just put some hot glue to make sure that uh, the plate would stay together. And I did that with the bottom by gluing it like this with the hot glue. I did it with the sides. I poured hot glue along the sides where the two screens come together to hold the screens together so they won't separate when you put your substrate in. Make sure you get all the corners but you can see it a little bit better here where that will hold the uh, screen together and make sure that uh, it doesn't bend inwards when you put your substrate in. And here's joining two pieces together because the pieces aren't as long as what you're going to be doing. So you just use a hot glue and glue the two pieces together because once again you don't want them moving and separating when you put your substrate in. So make sure all corners and everything are, are glued nice and tight. 
Uh, as you can see, if you're a little messy, no one's going to see it. Here's another corner that I did. Put a lot of hot glue on it. It's not going to separate. So that's, uh, that's it's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Now on the mating piece, as you see how I made it longer, you can see where it's actually longer by about, uh, you know, an inch or so. That's so when I finally am done with both pieces and I stamp them together, I can put hot glue there to help keep them together. That's just something I, I did a little add on to it. So the next step after getting all the pieces together is now, then once the plates are together, I decided to add window screen to the top of that, which I could have used other screening, the, the plastic craft screening if I wanted, but I had the window screen. I'm adding this because I'm going to use sand and I want to make sure the holes become even smaller yet so the sand does not migrate uh, down through in the plenum itself and fill the plenum up full of sand. A little bit of sand gets down there, that's not going to hurt anything. But uh, you're going to, if you're going to use sand or dirt, you're going to have to use a screen or you're going to have to get the uh, uh, craft screen, which even has smaller holes, and glue that on top of your plenum. And here's the finished product. As you can see throughout, you'll see little dabs of hot glue holding the screen onto the plenum. And this is so when I do pour the sand in, it, it will not turn into a like an hourglass and siphon through there and fill the bottom up full of sand. The next thing I did is I drilled a... Uh, uh, three sixteenths or you can go with a quarter inch hole. I put a quarter inch hole in the side and this is going to be for the air tubing is going to go there because mine is in the corner. And as you can see here, the airlift is going to be in the corner and that's why I drilled that hole so you can uh, put everything together and it looks cosmetically neater. So basically, this is what it looks like when it's all done. The air, uh, the tubing for the air is very close to the corner. So because I'm going to be looking at the tank from both sides, that's the reason I did this, just for cosmetic purposes. And as you can see, I use a stainless steel uh, U bend around the aquarium and then hook up the hose to that. I use the same thing on my 90 gallon and it works out real good. So as you can see here, everything looks nice and neat. It's close to the corner and it's ready to have the uh, uplift tube put on and then substrate put into the aquarium. And this is what it looks like. So that's only a little. Now the tubing that you see there is a little less than five inches long. That tubing, that's the way it comes. It's very short. Now it's time to start putting substrate in. Now I removed it from the aquarium. This is that little bag of Echo Complete I told you about. It came with that Echo uh, Eheim filter. Uh, I thought, well, I'll put this on the bottom of the plenum so this will grow bacteria also. But there's not a lot there. There's only one bag. And I did the same thing, and some other hobbies have done the same thing by putting a substrate like that underneath the plenum just a little bit to aid in uh, anoxic conditions that will be available to us in the very bottom of that plenum because it still has a uh, redox reading of uh, high enough so it is oxidizing the pollutants in the aquarium. The next thing I do is I added sand with gravel mix. Now the gravel came from the 20 gallon, uh, antique 20 gallon tank with the parrotfish that are in there. Uh, that's where the gravel came from. And this is what it kind of looks like. This sand I use is just play sand. It's not uh, pool sand. I don't particularly like the white sand myself. Others may because uh, it will affect the colors of fish. 
being so white, but it's your preference. But this is just play sand mixed with the aquarium gravel. And this gravel, of course, is uh, already has bacteria in it because it came from the 20-gallon tank that has been running now for almost two years. So all I did was take a little bit of that and some of the sand. I think I probably have at least 20 or 30 pounds of uh, substrate in the 20 gallon. And uh, the bag of sand is uh, 50 pounds. And uh, now the sand said it was pre-washed, so I did not clean the gravel. All I did was scoop it out, put it in a five gallon bucket, and mix the gravel and the sand together, and I did not clean anything. So if the gravel's dirty, it's dirty. If the sand's dirty, it's dirty. That's all I did was just have a cup and mix A with B. Move, you know, did it with my hand by stirring it around in the five-gallon bucket, and then I would pour that into the aquarium. And next, I put my kitty litter. Now, I patted it down. I used whatever kitty litter, maybe a quarter of an inch of kitty litter is all I used. I, I did not clean this. I just put it right in the tank, right out of the bank. That out of the bag. Sorry about that. And uh, just poured it in there, whatever I had left in the bag. As you can see, there's really not that much kitty litter. I try to keep away from the edges so you don't see it from the glass, the kitty litter. And the next step will be the laterite. I will sprinkle that on top of the kitty litter. This is the laterite I used. It's a very fine powder. Uh, people have complained about it, that it, it's very fine and sees the migrate into the aquarium. Uh, as you can see, I used the whole container and I sprinkled that right on top of the kitty litter that I had put down. Okay, once all that is down, you can add dirt to your aquarium. I added what is called aquarium soil on top of the laterite. And I only bought one bag. It's a 10-pound bag. And uh, this is going to act as my um, fertilizer. So when I put my plants in, they have something that will help give them nutrients right off the bat. So, but a lot of people say, oh, can I put dirt? Well, yeah, you could replace this with dirt, but I prefer to use something that's not so high in nutrients to cause problems. So I bought this uh, particular bag of soil off uh, Amazon. So as you can see, I put that down, the, all the 10 pound bag, and uh, try to keep it away from the edges the best I could, but uh, some of it went along the edge because I don't want to see it from the outside of the glass. Uh, on the left-hand side, it went a little too close to where the glass is, but that's, uh, like I said, that's going to provide nutrients right off the bat for the aquatic plants that I put in there. Now uh, it's finished here. This is the finished product. I, I top it back off with the rest of the uh, gravel I had from the 20 gallon and the bag of sand. So let's see, I got 10 pounds of the, of the aqua soil. I have uh, six, 50 pounds of sand and uh, mix those two together and about 20, 20 pounds at least of, of what was into the 20 gallon aquarium. So I got quite a lot of substrate in there and it's ready to go. That's it. Now, as I said before, I did not clean anything. I didn't clean the sand. I didn't clean the kitty litter. I didn't clean the aqua soil. I didn't clean the, this, uh, the substrate that I pulled out of the 20. Everything went into the aquarium, basically dirty. And here's the bag of that aqua soil, the back of it, in case you want to read any of the things that are, that what it says. But uh, when I started filling up the tank, uh, it was dirty. The water was 
brown, and I blew into the uplift tube, you know, the air hose, I blew into it so it was quite easy so air pump will be able to handle that uh, uplift tube. And it looked like, um, what can I say, a chimney. Because as I was filling it, there was so much uh, had went down inside the plenum itself. It was so dirty when I, when I blew bubbles out of it. It looked like it was a smokestack blowing out all this brown smoke, which really wasn't. It was particulate matter from the sand and everything else that because I had not cleaned anything, that went into the aquarium. So the entire aquarium was uh, completely brown, okay, or tan if you want to call it, and you could barely see anything in, it, in the aquarium. But I did that on purpose. I did everything here on purpose to find out because what I did is I, uh, I went on the internet and I start uh, on YouTube and I said sand bottoms and the first three YouTubes I watch about using sand bottoms the first three were all about sand bottoms of course but there were three main things of why they were using sand on the bottom of their aquariums and that is number one it's cheap number two it's cheaper than gravel and number three it's inexpensive basically all three YouTubes said the only reason they're using sand is because of the cost. One guy made mention for his 125-gallon tank why he used sand, and he used pool sand, which is white. Like I said, I didn't want white sand. Uh, and he basically just said because it's cheap. And I guess hobbyists are going with sand, not because it's cosmetically neat looking. It's just that it's so dirt cheap compared to buying a bag of uh, gravel, uh, whether you use small gravel, large gravel, whatever. It just came up so much cheaper than buying, uh, let's see, a 50-pound bag. I think I paid 6 bucks for play sand. I think it was $8 for pool sand, if you want the white sand. Um, so basically, that was it. The price. The price is just so ungodly cheap that uh, that is the reason they uh, went with sand. Anyway, I did want to show you this. This is the bottom of the stand and an aquarium. And this is that uh, foam board, the black foam board. Look at the way it's bent. Look at that. The tank is perfectly level. But you could see the foam board, the way it's molding itself around the metal stand. That's why I urge you, do not place the stand or do not place the tank directly on the stand. Use a piece of foam, foam board, or uh, maybe something that's, that's thicker. I'm glad I went with the three foam boards versus the two. Another thing I want to bring up too, remember I said... In the other video, how I put tape down on the aquarium stand, I taped all the foam board together. Definitely do that. Uh, about three times I had to readjust the tank on top of that foam board because it slipped and moved. So I had to readjust it. When you're filling it, leaning against it, there's not a lot of weight and it slipped and moved. I had to put it back, start putting water in it. It moved a little bit. I had to put it back. So keeping that foam board with that double back uh, carpet tape, remember I showed you in the part three, that holds it in place so you can slide that aquarium on top of the foam board and the foam board will not move on you. So uh, that definitely happened to me where I had to several times fix the aquarium and reline up the aquarium over the foam board. But I hope this uh, photograph shows you this is the reason why you have to put something underneath these metal stands. A long time ago, we used to buy metal stands, wrought iron stands. They were all nice, even, but they didn't come in parts. They, they were like one stand, and that's the way it was. If I remember correctly, I don't think you could, they came in a part. It was just all welded together. Today's stands come uh, modular. They come where they're come in a box, a nice thin box. You have to put them all together, which I showed you in the other video. 
definitely, definitely need some kind of cushion underneath them. Not that the stands are bad, but they're just being mass produced and they're not as flat and even as they should be. This is going to prevent your aquarium from twisting, bending, and uh, not being level so it winds up cracking on you. Anyhow, that is it for this particular video. Uh, next video, I'm going to show you the aquarium. It's all set up. It has fish in it. I'm going to uh, explain to you about the F-Zone canister filter. Hook that up. I'll explain to you all about that. Did I have any problems? Did I not have any problems? Um, it's rated at 800 gallons an hour pump. I'll tell you what I'm getting out of it. And that's all going to be in part four. And in part four, I will show you the lighting I'm using and uh, all that. But I did want to sh show to everybody and tell everybody this. When I did set up the aquarium, it was very, very foggy and, and dirty. And one hobbyist said that when they set up their aquarium with sand, it was all foggy, dirty, okay, typical. And it was a big aquarium, maybe 55 gallons, had two big filters. Maybe they looked like they were uh, a foot long. Two big hang-on-the-back filters. Big ones, you know, not small ones. These things look like they were huge. And plus a lot of bubblers and stuff. And then they complained that it took three days to clear up the tank. Well, I just want to tell everybody, I did not clean my substrate at all. So my tank was very, very brown. You know, tan color. You know, you couldn't even see your hand in it. Within three hours, after setting up the canister filter, remember I showed you how I set up the canister filter? Within three hours, that tank was clear. Within 24 hours, any murkiness from white or anything was gone. That canister sucked everything out of that aquarium and cleaned it. And right now, it's been over two days. I already have fish in the aquarium and everything. And I'll, I'll tell you on the next video how I did that. But we know that the tank would break in faster because of the substrate I used out of the 20 gallon had tons of bacteria on it. And I just mixed that up with the sand. And that's going to help the sand from compacting too because I have mixed two different substrates together because I don't like, and this is my preference, I'm not picking on anybody. I don't care for just white sand. I like the brown sand. It reminds me of Thailand. Uh, the little pebbles in it remind me of that. So that's the way I did it and it'll prevent that sand from compacting. Plus to me it looks cosmetically nicer and uh, that's the way I did it. I'll show you that, I'll, I'll, what I did. But basically uh, fish are in there and uh, I did add some quick start API to the canister filter. I used a bottle of that into the 40 gallon to help acclimate it along with the substrate that was already acclimated from the 20 gallon. And I'll get more into that in the video number four. So you may want to watch that because there's a few eye openers with that that will be coming up. So anyhow, that's what I did. The tank cleared up within a matter of hours, not days. Uh, it already has fish in it. There's not a, a single problem I'm having with anything. Tank's nice and clean and clear. That canister filter is doing the job. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping and uh, wait for part four to come out where I will be showing you the tank and everything and explaining a little bit more of the tank in detail with the canister, the F-Zone canister filter. Happy fish keeping.